morning, oh Lord God, and pray that every word that is spoken that be released in this house for this moment, for this time. And I pray he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to this church. So, Father, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My God. 21 days. 21 days. I'm going to go right in. The one thing that, that God has been speaking to me about, especially whenever I get to these moments here, is not to waste time. And I'm not up here to waste anybody's time. And so for me... I like to go right in and not waste. This is how I've received it. We don't have all the time in this world. And we don't. Amen. So why waste time? And so for me, I'm just ready to go right in. I've been ready to go right in every time I come in this house. Before I, I even begin on anything, I don't always have this opportunity to elaborate, but I'm up not here every Sunday, but I'm up over there from Sunday in, Sunday out. I feel the presence of God even now. He's here. He is here. And what I've gotten to the point in place in my life was that it, it, it shouldn't take certain things to access the presence of God. He went to hell and took the keys. And when, when we have keys to something, we have access. But what happens is we don't access it. Just like we have a key to everything else. We walk in. You can't expect to walk in a room that's locked. And if you have the key, you don't insert the key. You can't obtain access. Now, for me, I've grown up in the way that I got tired of doing the church thing. Mm -hmm. It didn't take me 40, 50 years to realize all that shouting you're doing is just for show. It didn't take me that long, and I didn't want it to. And so anything that I have, Anything that God gives me to relay, to speak, I'm going to come across as real as I possibly can. Because I've seen too much of the church deal. So anytime that God gives me a word, and sometimes it it's not always the most encouraging. But Jesus brought forth the truth, whether it was encouraging or not. And I'm not going to be the one to, to, to sing up and down here just to make people feel good. Because my, my worship, my call, and my responsibility is, 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 is to God first. Yes, yes. So let's go ahead and go in. Two Sundays ago, Sunday, February 11th. Every morning, there's morning glory. Yes, sir. There's morning prayer yes, sir. before the day gets going. Yes. I don't know about you, but for me, every morning, there's morning prayer. 
And I found out if I ever miss a day, I cannot function correctly. So Sunday morning on, on the 11th, I was before the Lord. And the Lord told me to just elaborate on this. I heard those words, fresh wind, fresh fire. And every time I heard it, it was always twice. It was always fresh wind, fresh fire. And the reason why I even even went the direction that I did before even starting, because there, there must be something fresh to blow forth here in this house. It must be. Because even if you stand outside, Pastor Art, I know you work at the mill. So sometimes when the wind blows, the, the, the fragrance, the, 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 what comes across is not, it's not the most pleasant smell. But the directions was as such, with arms lifted, God is blowing forth a fresh wind, fresh, fresh, fresh. And that word fresh also means new which is the opposite of a stench. For God is blowing forth his mighty wind, causing us to soar with wings as eagles. For he is breathing forth fresh fire and cleansing and burning all that which is not good in us. So let us not quench nor grieve the Holy Spirit. So on on such a time as this to to reach this 21st day, let everything that God cinched and seared that was not good in us, let us not go back and pick up the things that he cleaned out in the first place. It, It is also my desire that when we come off such a fast because opportunity will present itself to just dive deep right back into everything and this is how I see God gave me a visual he so loved and enjoyed these times and these moments that we came before him and set aside time to spend in prayer just as in the garden he looked for Adam and once Adam sinned Adam, where are you? So let's, let's not come off this fast, and, and so therefore we quit the time of prayer. That's no longer important anymore. And God has to come and ask you, where are you? But see, what happens is we get off the fast and we get into so many other things that we don't hear God asking us, where are you? We cannot hear his voice It's far from clear. That wasn't even where I was going. But however, the direction was as such to extend our hands. And as our hands were extended, wings, this is still the prophetic word that God gave me, wings would flow down our arms. Like an eagle, I could see the arms lifted and wings But whenever we put our arms back down, as such, the wings disappear in the picture. So this is what I saw, like an eagle, extended. So just as the eagle's wings are extended, this is how we ought to be. That's right. Soaring. But a lot of times what happens is we crash and burn. An eagle is supposed to soar high. But a lot of times we stay low. We can't reach the higher altitude when we rather stay here, low. In this place. The title of this message here is called Deeper Still. 
fresh wind, fresh fire. Deeper still. It should be your desire to go deeper and not stay in such a place. It should be where we soar. If we don't stay upon this, this ground level, when God is calling us higher, typically what we do is we back down and say, God, I'd rather stay right here. I'd rather do what I know to do, what I know how to do. Why? Because it's easier. So the first scripture God gave me was Isaiah 40, 29. All the scriptures will be up. Isaiah 40, verse 29. Coming from the complete Jewish Bible. Verse 29. He invigorates the exhausted. And he gives strength to the powerless. But... Verse 31 says, but those who hope in Adonai will renew their strength. I'm going to pause there and highlight those who hope. So before you are invigorated or before you are strengthened, you have to put your hope in Adonai. Put your hope in the Lord. Put your hope. All right, all right, all right. Some trust in chariots. Okay. Let me break that down and say some people put their trust in other things. Some of them or some of us hope and, and, and when that hope or when something fails, we wonder why. See, he renews their strength, and they will soar as wings with an eagle. I have a video, a short video of an eagle soaring. So this is what we're supposed to be doing. Real simple. So as the wind is blowing, with hands extended, with hands extended, because when the wind of God comes, hey, when the wind of God comes, all the eagle has to do is extend and soar. That's all that has to happen. He's not even trying. It happens. So when the fresh wind blows, hey, bye bye. That's all you have to do is extend. But what we come in at is we keep them down. So God has given us wings to soar, but we don't access it. He's given us access to his presence, but we don't use the keys that he's given us. So simple. The difficulty comes on our end, not God. That's where it comes. So he is causing us and allowing us. I remember. I'm not going to have you demonstrate it, brother. So, brother, come through the church. Just hands extended. I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But see, in the spirit, and that's the wind blowing, he's soaring. And what we see is, why is he doing that? Why? But when I used to see it, I, I, I would wonder, and I never forgot that. I would just wonder, why is he? Going around the church with hands extended. He, he, he grabbed hold of something yes, sir. Yes, sir. and understood something. Yes, sir. 
in the spirit. Beyond what we could imagine or even think. So the rest of that verse 31. And it's talking about us. So when they are running. They won't won't. Grow weary. So pastors, you've been running and, and running and, and running, running. Because your hope was in Adonai. Every time. And when they walk, they won't get tired. It's just simple, simple, simple. The gospel is, is, is straightforward. So again, so I ask this question. What's the difference between those who hope in the Lord and those who don't? It's already been answered. Simply put, those who put their hope in other things and they don't see that God is moving or they don't see what they've been praying for or they're out in the world and refuse to go fully into the presence of God. It makes no sense to me to continue to walk in a life day in, day out, and you still haven't surrendered your life. There's too much evidence. There's too much evidence that's all around us that God has already proved himself. Sometimes I hear God says, what what more else do I have to do to prove to you? How real do I need to get? So just as that eagle going back to the eagle with wings. That he's given us, this is who we were meant to be. We were not meant to crash and burn. We were not meant to stay upon this low level. We were not meant to just just come and do only what we know to do. Right. This why deeper still was the title that he gave me. Because there's still a level and a place of deepness that he's calling us into. So the, ne- the next part of that word that he gave me was talking about wind and fire. Yes, fresh wind. Fresh fire. Fresh wind. Fresh fire. Acts chapter 2. And suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound. Yes. From heaven. Of a mighty rushing. And I added this in. Fresh wind. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing. Mighty. Fresh. Wind. Before. Anything. Happens. Especially we're dealing with and we're talking about the presence of God. A sound will come forward. But we have to have an ear to hear the sound. So even before the spirit of God fell among the people, there was a sound that preceded the wind. So that's why for us and for me, I'm always looking for that sound. There's a a peculiar sound that must come. And that word suddenly means that it just happened. So there there was a people all together in one place. Now, I don't have this verse up here, but the scripture says they were all together on one accord. So that says a lot. I just believe that before the spirit of God fell. They all had to be together in unity on one accord. God God is not going to operate in discord. He's not. 
And it, it doesn't matter how great the anointing of somebody is. If, if, if there's discord in the house. That's why Jesus talks so much about go forgive your brother. Or before you go talking about other people, look at the speck and you need to get your speck out your own eye. So I just believe that before he fell, before the spirit of God came. Unity. One accord was preached. Spirit, the scripture doesn't go too much in depth about such, but. The next part of that verse says, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And I thought this word was so befitting for this time as we are ending this fast. Because as we wait for the spirit of God and he sends forth a mighty, rushing, fresh wind. Almost every single Sunday of this fast has just been powerful in the spirit. And it must remain. It must remain. Oh. And I say verse 3, not lightly. And there appeared unto them. See. So first they heard a sound before the mighty Russian wind came. And what appeared to them was cloven tongue. So they saw the tongues before it even came. They saw the tongues and it was like as fresh fire. I'm going to pause there, and what, what God added to me was, we've been here in a place, and God is calling us to a higher place. And so even with that place, he is causing forth even new tongues, new tongues. And for those who have not been Filled. The Spirit, Holy Ghost, fire. I don't want to. I don't want to go too far ahead. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as fresh fire, and it, the Holy Spirit, sat upon each of them. It was the Holy Ghost. Mind you, no hands were laid. But the Spirit of God sat. In some versions, some of it says that, that cloven, that word cloven, it says like little cloven tongues of fire. So there was fire that was, sit, that's right, that was sitting on top of the people. And it, and it sat upon them. And it remained upon them. Yeah, like cloven tongues of fire. That word cloven means divided or separated. So whether it's literal or figurative, that fire that comes in. Amen. Fire. Because see, when we look for and even when we've seen fire in the natural, fire can consume and burn to the ground. That flame, that fiery flame. But just as this scripture, as Pastor already pointed out, the consuming fire of God comes to consume us, but it doesn't burn us to the ground. But it burns within our belly. So that when we speak, we speak forth with boldness. And when we speak, we speak forth with fire. And so as fire comes out, we have the power and the dominion. 
See, that's why demons don't have no place where Jesus dwells. Because he shuts them down right there. And with that fire, with that boldness, they can't stand. Hey, I'm going to fast forward. The next scripture, John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he said, there will be another who will come after me, who is mighty, much stronger than I am. I am not even worthy. (laughs) Not even worthy. But he is coming to baptize you with fire, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hey, so it's not good enough just to be baptized in the water. That's not enough. The desire should be that I, my God, to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence, because it's all around, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, with fire, fresh. Because, see, what happens is over time, that fire, if not kept, if it's not stirred, it can go down and it can go out. And so your fire for Jesus, (laughs) it falls by the wayside. And so what what happens is we begin to hear the words of pastor not preaching good no more. They're not singing the songs that I want to hear no more. That church to have have lost this fire. And it wasn't a church. You lost your fire. You lost your passion. Who stole your passion? And it's not about just who stole it, because if you haven't fanned the flame, then you, your own self, allowed the fire to go out. And it's just that simple. We always try to blame somebody else, blame the enemy. But God has given us our own will. So therefore, the fire that has diminished can, we, we can point the finger and we can turn it right back around on us. So if I get to a point in place when y'all see me, Lord, y'all can call it out. If I'm over singing doom and gloom, because nobody knows. If, if, if that becomes my heart's song and 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 all throughout scripture, there's one word that continues to come to mind is woe. Woe, woe, woe is me. And so that fire for God has completely gone out. And that fire is not what it used to be. So, So when the words fresh wind, fresh fire came, it was as such as what must be released in this house, that the wind of God come. And when the wind of God comes, he's blowing forth the fire. And when the fire comes, it comes to sit among us. And when it sits, it must remain. It's just that simple. But if we don't humble ourselves. If we choose to do our own will, and that's why I believe that on this 21st day of this fast is so important because we can make a decision today to continue and to go deeper throughout the rest of this year in the many years of this life that God has us here. We can make a decision or at 559.59, it's right back into everything else. Everything that I didn't or I put aside to do, 
right back. We, we right there in the drive through 559.59. I'm not going to order until. Oh, you standing in the line and you tell everybody, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's not 6 o'clock yet. Or you go ahead and make the order while the food's sitting there on the table until that 6 o'clock. But let, let's not go back. See, God is, is taking us too far to, for us to, to turn back. He's taking us too far. Too far. And, and see what happens when you take steps forward and, and when you take steps backward, it takes more work to get back to the place that you were before and to supersede or to go beyond of the place that you were before. I didn't have this, but uh, many or some years ago, I've always, from the time of 14, been playing the piano. God has given me that gift, and... Um, at one point, I've used it to puff me up. I became puffed up and prideful. And throughout the time of, of, of college years, I refused to touch a keyboard, a piano, refused. And so even when the time came to come before God and worship on the piano, I could not access that place that I once was. It took me a while. It took some time. Yes, yes. And it took many seasons. So I couldn't even get back to the place that I was right then and there. It took some time. Mm -hmm. So even what you hear, it took some years to even get back to that place. Because I can remember even at the age of 14, just playing. And there would be those, or even in the Baptist sanctified church, who jump and shout for the very purpose of jumping and shouting. But in a church where hands weren't laid, in a church where tongues weren't a norm, but altar call was had whenever I would get on the piano. And people crying, tears, I've never seen such a thing. But after those college years, I couldn't do that. There was not a flow whenever I would touch the piano, which is why I never wanted to go back to it in the first place. It took some time to get back to that place and past that place. I'm saying this for the very purpose of God has done too much in this time of fasting and prayer. And for us to turn around and go back. So, so, so when the spirit of God is moving so heavy in this place, it's so unrecognizable because you've taken steps back. And so what happens is you have to come and get upon the altar and cry out before God. And repent and repent and repent. But God says, you don't have to go that route. Just keep the fire going. Keep the flame going. So for me, I speak also from a place of experience. And I've already made up in my mind that I don't want to have to keep going and then back up. And then go at it again and then back up. So as he's released forth, this fresh wind. Here's the fresh opportunity for renewal and rededication. Here is an opportunity here to say, God, I've taken this time. And I want this to be real. Continually. Not the up and down. Not the tossed 
to and fro. But here, I want to be planted in the house of my God. For better is one day, just one day in your court, in your house. I love, I love that it says I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. A doorkeeper. A doorkeeper than out in the club. A doorkeeper than out in the streets. A doorkeeper in the house of my God than to be hanging around with people who are not going to propel me to my destiny. A doorkeeper in the house of my God. That's what the scripture says. That's what I'd rather be. This is why God sent forth his son. And this is why after Jesus left, he said, I'm going to send forth the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Verse four of Acts two. Final scripture. And they were all filled. That word all means exactly what it means. So there was not one person. There was not one person. So and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave utterance. So I believe that this time is a fresh opportunity to receive, yeah. to receive the fire from heaven to fall fresh. No song that we sing is by coincidence. So when, I, so when the prayer was, Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. Fresh. The wind of God is here. Can you sense it? Can you feel it? The fire of God has come. The fire like clothing. But I believe that we're in a day and time where the opportunity is there. But we just have to receive it. We have to accept it. Would you accept it? Would you accept it? Because what was offered by Satan is only a counterfeit. It's not the real thing. It's not going to take you into your eternal destiny. And so to be right here in this place, in this moment, is a special time. So for all those who have not been filled, and for those who would have a desire for fresh, new fire, tongues to be Field. Hey, Ramama Sheik. The opportunity is here. The opportunity is now. So would you stand to your feet? Hey, Ramama Mama Mama Baba.